so we are starting with this topic trigeminal nerve which is the fifth cranial nerve the important points about trigeminal nerve the basics anybody it is the largest cranial nerve it is the largest cranial nerve then it is the chief sensory supply from the majority of the face or the head region including intracranial and deep facial structures as well as the skin around the face and the skull so the main sensory supply from the face and the head region then <clears throat> it's not purely sensory because it also has a motor root and you know that motor component of trigeminal supplies the muscles derived from the first brachial arch so that's why it's called brachial efferent or special visceral efferent component of trigeminal now this component runs along with only the v3 division that is the mandibular division of trigeminal nerve the other two divisions v1 v2 and they are mainly sensory purely sensory so the main functional component of trigeminal nerve is general somatic afferent general somatic afferent means it brings all sort of extraceptive conscious and subconscious proprioceptive sensations from the entire head including the face except the occipital and the posterior portion of the uh, occipital and the neck region and the angle of mandible and deep down into the throat as well as the tongue the rest majority of the area is the the sensory afferents being conveyed to the trigeminal nerve okay so let's begin so trigeminal nerve from where does it emerges from the ventral aspect of the brain you know it arises from the upper part of pons here you seeing is the midbrain region and this is the interpeduncular fossa this is the third cranial nerve i've already taught you from the medial aspect of the crest cerebri to the oculomotor sulcus there you find on the lateral side of the crest cerebri is trochlear nerve this comes from behind dorsally decussating and from opposite side it emerges to the opposite side you know it crosses the cerebral superior cerebral peduncle and crest cerebri superior cerebellar peduncle and cerebral peduncles and this is the temporal lobe so it emerges between the temporal lobe and the upper part of the pons this all has been taught to you abducens also has been taught to you it emerges at the pontomedullary junction medially just above the pyramids there you see this is the thickest nerve emerging right thickest cranial nerve and what is the largest nerve in the human body it is sciatic nerve imagine it's so thick it emerges it's it's around around 2 cm in thickness when it emerges from the greater sciatic foramen below the piriform is remember so sciatic is the largest nerve in the human body remember largest and longest you have to differentiate like in largest is related to the bulk thickness of muscle fiber uh, muscle or nerve or whatever and longest is related to the length so longest cranial nerve is yes, it is vagus hmm simran vein okay and abdul samad yes it is vagus so so you are seeing that it is the upper portion of the pons it arises laterally bilaterally and then this is trigeminal nerve and then soon it has its ganglion here this ganglion is the sensory ganglion and sensory ganglion if you correlate with the spinal nerves that it is homologous to dorsal root ganglion and therefore 
this ganglion is actually the collection of first order pseudo unipolar neurons and the cytons collected here so similar to drg this is homologous to drg so this is gasserian ganglion then it divides into its three divisions v1 v2 v3 and can you see another thing here this thing this is the motor root of the trigeminal nerve which is arising medially m4 motor m4 medial okay the nucleus for this nerve motor division is not a separate nucleus rather from the main sensory nucleus only the medial portion of that nucleus the main sensory nucleus is the motor nucleus and among the three divisions you can see that v3 is the largest division okay now the inside of the cranium on the floor in the base of the cranium from the inside this side you seeing that the dura has been peeled off so what you seeing is this is actually the infratentorial compartment of the posterior cranial fossa this is the middle cranial fossa this is the anterior cranial fossa so you seeing that this has been cut out to expose this region because you know the pons lies within the posterior cranial fossa so from the ventral side of the pons this area is, this area is called clivus right the inner surface of the base occiput sloping down surface so this nerve you can see is here you seeing is the tentorium cerebelli attached to the superior border of the petrous temporal bone and it lodges the superior petrosal dural venous sinus within it this nerve when it reaches here at the apex of petrous temporal bone it carries the dura along with it the fold of dura enclosing the trigeminal ganglion right so it rests over this apex of petrous temporal bone on its surface facing the mid, uh, middle cranial fossa and the fold of dura covering this trigeminal ganglion is called meckel's cave right so they you seeing in the when in the medial portion of the middle cranial fossa you have this ganglion resting here on either side of the cavernous sinus this area is cavernous sinus and the nerve passing through this then the three divisions can you see v1 is this ophthalmic division which runs you know here through the cavernous sinus lateral lateral in the cavernous sinus and emerges and passes through the superior orbital fissure but before passing in the superior orbital fissure it divides into its three division you know frontal nasociliary and lacrimal right nasociliary passes from the middle portion while frontal and lacrimal they pass through the lateral portion of the superior orbital fissure then is v2 division which runs straight and this is the anterior portion of this middle cranial fossa there is this foramen rotundum through this foramen rotundum v2 emerges in the terigo palatine fossa then this you can see is the largest division is the mandibular nerve that is v3 division and remember first and second both v1 v2 they are running through the cavernous sinus the lateral or in the lateral wall of cavernous sinus right below the third and fourth uh, cranial nerves you find v1 v2 in the lateral wall of cavernous sinus then v3 it does not crosses the cavernous sinus rather it soon dips down here in the floor of the middle cranial fossa and there is a foramen ovale here so through this foramen ovale mandibular nerve reaches down outside the cranium 
Now you're seeing here, this is uh, spinal cord, medulla, then the pons, midbrain, right? So this is the brain stem. They have given us the dietal section. So to expose this nucleus, this is the superior sensory nucleus, so the main chief sensory nucleus of the trigeminal nerve. Remember, it, uh, it's the relay center for proprioceptive sensations, right? Extraceptive and proprioceptive sensations. While this is the ascending portion of this trigeminal nucleus, which reaches into the brainstem and middle uh, midbrain, and this is the mesencephalic nucleus of the trigeminal nerve. While this nucleus, which ascends down to the lower portion of pons, then medulla, then C1, C2 portion of this, uh, you know, spinal cord. This portion is called the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve. And remember that this is the portion which receives mainly, you know, pain and temperature fibers, as well as, you know, crude touch and crude pain also. Uh, although light touch, touch, tactile sensation, pain and temperature sensations reach there in the spinal nucleus. Okay. So then you're seeing that this nerve emerges out from the pons, literally from the upper portion, then there is this ganglion here, the Gasserian ganglion, that is the sensory ganglion. V1, V2, V3 are the three divisions. This is passing through the superior white fissure and it gives different branches. I told you they are frontal, lacrimal, and nasociliary. Then this one emerges through foramen rotundum, endoterigopalatine fossa, and it gives this branches, agomatic, greater petrocell, uh, uh, greater palatine, lesser palatine, spinopalatine, right? And the <coughs> lacrimal and the, you know, temporal branches as well as posterior superior alveolar, then, you know, anterior middle, uh, anterior middle superior alveolar. There are a lot of branches of this area being innovated by V2 division. Then V3 division, you can see is this mandibular division, the largest division. It is also containing motor fibers as well as the parasympathetic secretomotor fibers. Remember, this also was carrying parasympathetic fibers and this also was carrying parasympathetic fibers. This was carrying parasympathetic fibers for the ciliary ganglion for the intraocular smooth muscles. And this was carrying, you know, parasympathetic fibers for the pterygopalatine ganglion and to for the sec lacrimatory secretions from the lacrimal gland, from the mucosal glands of the sinuses from the palate pharynx right and the uh, oral cavity and the nasal cavity mucosal secretions and this you know this that's why this ganglion the pterygopalatine ganglion which is topographically attached with this maxillary nerve is also called who will tell me what is the other name for this pterygopalatine ganglion it is also called ganglion of hay fever, ganglion of hay fever, right? So because of this, <clears throat> there is a sneezing reflex, right? A sneezing reflex, you know, because, uh, you know, it conveys sensory fibers from this region as well as the secretomote. It provides secretomotor fibers to this region, right? Nose orbits then palate pharynx soft palate right so this area in the paranasal sinuses this ganglion attached with maxillary nerve is called ganglion of hay fever and then v3 division you know it was carrying you know sensory fibers general somatic afferents right from this mandibular region skin around cheek uh, lower portion of the face mandibular region then the pain sensations from the teeth uh, from the lower jaw and all and also it was carrying parasympathetic fibers for the ot ganglion related to this nerve for the secretions of parotid gland right then it is also carrying the Gen, uh, it is also carrying special visceral efferents, right? Brinkle efferents for the eight muscles that this nerve innervates 
four muscles of mastication and two are the tensor tympani tensor villi palatini and the two muscles in the lower in the suprahyoid region these are anterior belly digastric and mylohyoid so they are all derived from the first wrinkle arch got it so there was a summary about the three divisions which are arising from this uh, trigeminal ganglion okay next what we are going to see is this nuclei of trigeminal nerve right we have to focus on this so remember we are talking is this upper section of the pons how we find that if it's like asked uh, like simply that they were given without uh, writing any caption to the diagram if it's asked like you know which section of the brain stem it is right so one thing you can identify is that the uh, you know this is the fourth ventricle and it has a roof covered so it's not open behind so if it's covered from above that it means it's a closed portion of the fourth ventricle right so that means it's the upper portion of the pons because in the lower portion of the pons this wouldn't have been covered it is exposed and rather it's covered by cerebellum right so this one one helps you identify that is the upper portion of the pons then other thing that will help you identify is the nucleus of the trigeminal nerve as well as you can see of course this is the basilar portion of the pons which will also be there in the lower section of the pons now we focusing about the nucleus so because before focusing on the nucleus you should know that what are the functional components remember that i told you about the functional columns of the brain stem so <clears throat> being general somatic afferent right the general somatic afferent is placed literally right uh, in in, um, uh, in the lr lamina right uh, not exactly very literally because it is uh, there is a uh, special somatic afferent which is the most lateral from vestibular and cochlear nerves and this functional column is meant to receive the proprioceptive conscious subconscious proprioceptive sensations extra receptive sensations include pain temperature and all right so and the other one was special visceral efferent the motor fibers now look here one by one we'll discuss about the different nuclei remember trigeminal now is having this function column actually is completely taken up by the trigeminal nucleus which is divided into three parts so let's see now this is the afferent root right so these are the fibers which are relaying here in the spinal nucleus of the trigeminal nerve spinal nucleus is the nucleus which extends from the lower pons then medulla then c2 cervical the c2 cervical segments and this i told you is bringing in the pain and temperature sensations from the face and the head and these fibers are having their cytons lying within the trigeminal ganglion so these are the pseudo unipolar neurons with their central processes reaching within the brain stem and they will continue down into the spinal nucleus of the trigeminal nerve right then look at this nucleus these fibers which are entering here these fibers which are entering here they are laying here in the superior sensory nucleus of the trigeminal nerve this one superior sensory nucleus of the trigeminal nerve lies at the upper section of the pons and this nucleus receives mainly i told you the proprioceptive sensations right so why not compare with the spinal cord this will help you you know correlate this is will be related to lamina 2 and lamina 3 of the spinal cord the spinal nucleus right remember for substantia gelatinosa and nucleus proprius of the spinal cord this is homologous spinal nucleus is homologous to substantia gelatinosa and nucleus proprius okay then <clears throat> uh this one here this is the superior sensory nucleus right superior sensory nucleus is at the upper level of the pons 
and this receives fibers for proprioceptive sensations mean tactile discrimination localization like of tactile stimulus as well as touch pressure vibration and all these sensations are brought here to the superior nucleus of the trigeminal nerve so this if you compare with the spinal cord a uh, gray matter in the spinal cord this will be homologous to nucleus proprius right nemina 3 and 4 okay then <clears throat> this this you know fibers these fibers you can see they are running straight away bypassing this trigeminal ganglion so they are not relaying here rather they are straight away reaching above to the midbrain level and they they will have their cytons these are the cell bodies of these neurons so there's unipolar neurons right so the unipolar neurons so these fibers will bring in the deep proprioceptive sensations which are subconscious proprioceptive sensations remember the spinocerebellar pathway right dorsal and ventral spinocerebellar pathway which was bringing the subconscious and unconscious proprioceptive sensations from the body remember and they were having two order neurons right so it will be homologous to the clarkes column right this uh, you know clarkes column this lamina uh, six uh, five and six right Five six so lamina Clark is dorsal column that will be that also it receives the proprioceptive subconscious impulses impulses similarly is this which brings sensations from the skeletal muscles right and they do not have the cytons within this ganglion they straight away reach to the upper portion of the brainstem that is the midbrain and into the mesencephalic nucleus they will uh, have the cytons there so they are unipolar neurons right then you have the medial most m for motor m for medial i have repeatedly been telling you that motors are always placed medially in the brain stem so motor nucleus will be placed medially now this is a efferent pathway this is a efferent pathway so motor neurons of motor nucleus of the fifth nerve and as i told you that it's not a distinct nucleus when you cut when you have a cut section you will not find that this motor nucleus is distinctively and separately placed right rather it is the medial part it's a medial part of the superior sensory nucleus okay so from here the lower motor neurons will emerge out and will run along the mandibular nerve to innovate the eight muscles derived from the first branchial arch okay i hope you have understood so this is the trigeminal nerve which has three types of fibers i mean three it carries three different types of sensations right exteroceptive including pain and temperature reach to the spinal nucleus then proprioceptive sensations reach to the main sensory nucleus then subconscious proprioceptive sensations reach to the mesencephalic nucleus while there's another pathway that's a descending pathway and that's a motor efferent and they will also be a part of trigeminal nerve but they will pass only through v3 division got it okay next we will see here what this ganglion is further going to do this ganglion as i told you was uh, you know lodged within this uh, meekles cave the fold of uh, cave formed by the dua and this is emerging out from the nervous tissue this is trigeminal nerve and here is the ganglion so as i told you it's the chief sensory supply from the face so remember that if you have been taught about the development of face if you remember that face actually develops from three pro five processes this is frontonasal process from above dipping down to the tip of the nose right including the palate area 
uh, sorry, in, no, including the septum, nasal septal area, dorsal root of nose, and this is all the forehead, upper eyelids, and the scalp up till the vertex. And it includes the temple, re this region, little side of the forehead. Now about the maxillary region. V2 division conveys sensations from the uh, nasal area, nasal, you know, cavity. Then you have the deep sinuses, maxillary sinuses, right? And the lower eyelids, zygoma, zygoma upper lips, and the temp uh, temple region as well. The V3 division conveys sensations from the jaw, lower, I mean, jaw, the lower jaw, then the chin region, then the lower portion of the cheeks, and including the upper two third of the outer surface of the pinna, as well as the temple region. Except what is left behind is the angle of uh, parotid region, right? The angle of the mandible and the ear lobule. They are not by the trigeminal nerve rather by the cervical nerve right great auricular nerve you know that so this is like just i'm giving the superficial thing there are much more structures deep within which we'll discuss later so these are the three different nerve i mean divisions of the trigeminal nerve they are and from different foramina you know superior vital fissure this is foramen rotundum this is entering to the foramen ovale and ultimately they join this nerve and this ganglion is semi-lunar in shape remember it is semi-lunar in shape and trigeminal ganglion is also called gesserian ganglion it's homologous to dorsal root ganglion the spinal cord it's a sensory ganglion now we will see how these different uh, sensations and where do they convey and what are the three different nucleus doing here this is pons right this portion is the medulla and this is the spinal cord okay so focus on what i'm trying to explain here it is this pons so within the pons, the upper section of the pons you will find is the superior sensory nucleus of the trigeminal nerve, right? And as I told you, in the lower portion of the pons, you find is abducent nerve, the facial nerve, facial nerve winds behind this abducent nerve, bringing a bulging here, dorsalane, that's called facial colliculus, and then this emerges out of facial nerve. So what you've seen that in the upper pons of uh, upper section of the pons you find is this superior sensory nucleus of the trigeminal nerve. Then you have the spinal nucleus. Although they have shown it, they're starting here. It actually starts from the lower portion of the pons itself. This is spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve. From the lower pons, it extends to the medulla and reaches to the spinal cord up to the second spinal segment, cervical segment. Okay, then what else you find here is, uh, can you see that this is a V1, V2, V3 divisions, right? Bringing sensations from the face. Yes, all they have already shown, I've mentioned it here. There's a correction in this diagram. So from ophthalmic nerve, the sensations brought, brought in from the orbital region these fibers are actually, you know, sensory fibers. So they're pseudo unipolar neurons. So instead of synapsing, they have wrongly shown it as a synapse. There actually is not, uh, there's not a synapse here. Rather, it's a collection of cytons of first order sensory neurons. That's the ganglion, not because of the synapse, right? So you should have, they should have actually drawn it, the cytons here, the cell bodies of the first order sensory neurons, instead of making it as a synapse. So there's a correction anyways. So V1 is this, right? So V2 is entering from the face region. I have told you V2, what region it brings sensations from through the foramen rotundum that also reaches here. V3 from foramen oval brings the sensation from lower part of the face and that also reaches here. Then this, the central processes instead of making a synapse remember the central processes of these pseudo unipolar neurons they enter the nervous tissue of the brain stem through the trigeminal nerve so this much only is called the trigeminal nerve this portion is the 
trigeminal nerve, the largest nerve, right? Okay, so then from here, the the sensations will be segregated, right? I told you there are different three different functional, uh, you know, uh, types of sensations being brought in. Proprioceptive sensations brought in will ascend up higher and reach the mesencephalic nucleus. Then proprioceptive sensations will reach the superior sensory nucleus. Pain, temperature and fine touch sensations, they will reach the spinal nucleus of the trigeminal nerve. Right? Then this has been studied in detail and have a little bit of controversies regarding different authors. So let me talk about the spinal nucleus. As I told you, spinal nucleus runs from the lower portion of the pons, medulla and the spinal cord only up to the C2 spinal segment. Then uh, the fibers I told you is, you know, brought in because of the, you know, pattern, the, soma, uh, you know, uh, somatotropic representation of the face is there in the spinal nucleus, the trigeminal nerve. So the sensations brought in, this has been studied by different scientists. It has like different views to understand. So one proposal of understanding is that how the fibers from V3 division, that is the mandibular division, they will relay here, the first order neurons, they will relay here in the upper portion of the spinal, uh, spinal nucleus of trigeminal. V2 uh, fibers, the sensations brought in from V maxillary division will relay here in the middle portion of the spinal nucleus and the sensations brought in through ophthalmic divisions, they will relay in the lower one third of the spinal nucleus of trigeminal. So this is one proposal about understanding this spinal nucleus. How are the newer concept or some other authors related differently? They say instead of this up, uh, you know, dividing into three segments of V3, V2 and V1, this actually will re represent, remember, this actually is going to re represent an upside down face, right? <clears throat> So the other way is, uh, you know, explaining it is that all the three sensations brought in from the three different divisions of the trigeminal nerve, they are extending in the entire length of the spinal nucleus, but V1 is related. It's actually laminar, laminar uh, distribution. So V1, they say, is relayed medially in the spinal nucleus. V2 relays in the middle portion of the spinal nucleus, V3 division relays in the lateral portion of the spinal nucleus. So V1 to V3 is medial to lateral somatotropic representation in the spinal nucleus of trigeminal. So there is another way of explaining this. <clears throat> okay. And one more important thing that as you know that this functional column is general somatic afferent okay and that you also know that the sensations this type of sensations right extraceptive proprioceptive sensations they are not only being conveyed completely by uh, trigeminal although trigeminal covers the maximum area of the face and head region but there are also sensations you know these extraceptive sensations brought in from facial nerve. Remember, there is a branch, a auricular branch from the uh, facial nerve, which brings sensations from the external auditory meters in and around the external auditory meters. So facial nerve will also, you know, contribute to this. The sensations brought in will also from facial nerve will also have a communication with this final nucleus, right? Similarly, if you remember the tongue, nerve supply of the tongue, apart from the gustatory special taste sensation, you also have the general sensations from the tongue and uh, the general sensations from the posterior one third of the tongue, if you remember, they were brought in by glossopharyngeal nerve, right? 
So the brosopharyngeal now will also bring pain, temperature, tactile sensations from the posterior one third of the tongue, and they will relate here, right? And <clears throat> these are remember these are general somatic afferent sensations. Then vagus, right? Remember, vagus will bring in sensations again. There's a nerve supply, the auricular branch of vagus. If you remember, it also conveys sensations from the external auditory meatus. So, as well as the posterior most portion of the tongue, as well as epiglottis, like so larynx region, swala. So it also brings it to general somatic afferent sensations through vagus that is brought in on that also relays in the spinal nucleus. So spinal nucleus is not specifically for trigeminal, but it also have con connections with the facial glossopharyngeal and vagus. One thing is this. Then other communication of the trigeminal is with the meson. This is solely like that's why we call it as the chief or the chief sensory nucleus of the trigeminal, which is only related with the trigeminal nerve. <clears throat> but the mesencephalic, we have set up in the midbrain, mesencephalic nucleus brings in proprioceptive sensations from the skeletal muscles. And that you know, you've, you've been taught about oculomotor nerve. Remember, that was also a communication with mesencephalic for the proprioceptive sensations from the extraocular muscles. Similarly, for trochlear and ducent nerve from SO4 and LR6, <laughs> superior oblique and lateral rectus. So, mesencephalic nucleus will be related with these uh, oculomotor, trochlear, and abducent nerve also, and with the muscle, you know, you know, proprioceptive sensations from the muscles derived from the second brain collage, that means the facial muscles or facial expression. That sensations are also being relayed in the mesencephalic, remember? So, and <clears throat> Then, you know, stylopharynges, stylopharynges also, this proprioceptive sensations are being brought in through the glossopharyngeal nerve, yes. Then this um, proprioceptive sensations from the muscles of the larynx, from the soft palate, from the pharynx, right. So these are from fourth and sixth arches. So these sensations will really end through, you know, which nerve, uh, tenth and eleventh cranial nerve. So these so many nerves which are actually supplying and don't forget the muscles of the tongue that is hypoglossal nerve. So hypoglossal nerve also brings in proprioceptive sensations from the muscles of the tongue and they are all being relayed in the mesencephalic nucleus, right? So mesencephalic nucleus has a communication with so many nerves and all the nerves which innervate the skeletal muscles of the face and the head region, they all ultimately relaying their proprioceptive sensations, sensations in the mesencephalic nucleus of the trigeminal nerve. Okay, good. Now, this, as I told you, has some clinical points, which I'll discuss here. This is the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve. And as I told you, it has a somatotropic representation, which I've tried to explain you with my own diagram. <clears throat> this, you see, is the spinal nucleus of the trigeminal from the lower pons to the C2 cervical spinal segment, right? So as I told you, this spinal segment, this is the third theory, right? First I told you was divided into V3, V2, V1 portion. That was the one concept of explaining the spinal nucleus of trigeminal no? Oh, uh, spinal nucleus trigeminal, right? The other proposal was to explain it that the medial most portion was V1, then intermediate is V2 and the lateral portion was V3. That was the lamellar, lamellar arrangement of the uh, Sensi you know, sensations being brought in through three divisions in the spinal nucleus. And this is the third portion of concept where they divide it actually into three parts. They say, because on the basis of the somatotropic representation, they say that the upper one third is from lower pons to the hypoglossal nucleus, right? The upper portion. So from lower pons to the upper portion, the hypoglossal nucleus, uh, uh, this portion is called parts oralis, right? The middle portion from the hypoglossal nucleus to the obex. Obex is, you know, a point where the, you know, on the dorsal aspect of the medulla, where this, you know, fourth ventricle, the lower portion of the fourth ventricle, the two boundaries where the few, they meet, that point is obex and the dorsal aspect of the medulla. So from the hypoglossal nucleus to obex, this 
portion here is called as interpolaris, right? And from obex, then down below from medulla reaching to the spinal cord, C2 segment, this much portion of the spinal nucleus is called pars caudalis, right? So you have three, they've divided the spinal nucleus, the trigeminal, into three parts. And what, imagine now what, uh, so it will already, you know, oralis, remember, oralis means oral region. So that means the face will be represented upside down. So what, uh, in this, in the spinal nucleus trigeminal, the sensations brought in will be fine touch from the orofacial region. This is the orofacial region. So sensations uh, brought in from this region, the fine touch sensations, they will be relayed in the upper portion that's called pars oralis. Then pars interpolaris. This will bring in fine touch sensation from the cheeks, right? From the cheeks and the dental pain, pain arising from tooth region, right? So th that will be conveyed in the middle portion. Then in the lower, that is pars caudalis. Pars caudalis will bring in the nociception, means pain sensation, as well as thermal sensation from the head and forehead region, right? And that will be relayed in the pars caudalis. So you've seen that it is an upside down representation. And further one thing is the tactile sensations being represented, being relayed in the upper portion while pain and temperature fibers are being relayed in the lower portion, right? So there are two things which you have uh, noticed here that one thing is that the representation of the face is an upside down somatotropic representation, right? As well as another thing is that the touch temperature, touch related fibers, they will relay upper portion of the spinal nucleus and pain and temperature fire related sensations will brought in the lower portion. Got it? So I'm telling is because if there is any some lesion, make this diagram in your mind because I'll be teaching you about there is actually a thing called dissociative uh, sensory loss in cases of trigem. Uh, injury of the lower pons dissociative sensory loss one thing i told you if you remember the slide before there was the superior sensory nucleus and then you have the spinal the, the, these nuclei are actually uh, not very well connected right so sometimes what happens is there's an injury to the lower pons let's say or the medulla which compresses upon the spinal nucleus so in that particular region of the face there will be pain and temperature loss, but there will be tactile sense of touch or sense of pressure will be there. And such uh, sensory loss is called dissociative sensory loss when like, you know, complete anesthesia, there's not complete anesthesia. Rather, some sensations like pain and temperature are lost, but although touch and pressure sensations are intact. So that is, that is uh, that type of sensory loss is called dissociative sensory loss. And another thing is the representation of these sensations in the face is called onion skin skin appearance. I'll tell you how onion skin, like, you know, onion, if you feel an onion, there is layer by layer we go inside, right? So the deepest portion, uh, you know, I will tell you actually will be this portion. So initially there'll be peripheral sensory loss, then the center in the regions on the V2 division, then lastly, the sensations from the oral V2. This is the deepest portion, uh, which will be, which this area is the parts oralis is the area, which is the last to be damaged whenever there is injury to the spinal nucleus. Now we will talk about the functional components and communications of this trigeminal. Now, up till now, what we have discussed is all about the nucleus and the peripheral sensations like the trigeminal now we haven't till yet discussed about what's happening with its communication with the higher centers right so we're going to discuss about that now so <clears throat> these sensations as you know they're all general somatic afferent or spinal nucleus so you know listen very coolly because this is a bit bit sort of complicated if you'll not focus you might not get it properly so pain and temperature sensations, as I told you, they were brought in through these first order pseudo neurons. 
and they will pass through the spinal nucleus of the trigeminal nerve. Got it? And then this is for the efferent, right? This is for the general visceral efferent for muscles derived from the first brinkle arch. Right. And what about this this portion? This is which is reaching to the superior sensory nucleus, right? So superior sensory nucleus will, uh, you know, uh, will receive the proprioceptive fibers. Right? Superior from touch and pressure sensations. Touch and pressure sensations will be brought in to the to the superior sensory nucleus. And what about this pseudo uh, this unipolar neurons reaching to the mesencephalic? They will bring in subconscious or unconscious proprioceptive sensations from the temporomandibular joint from the teeth region muscles derived from the first brinkle arch extraocular muscles muscles the second brinkle arch as well as muscles from the pharynx larynx you know so <coughs> that we have discussed and these fibers are unipolar neurons so <coughs> now first let's con complete the afferent pathway so ultimately, all the sensations have been brought to the three different nucleus of the trigeminal nerve. Now the sensations, these were the first order neurons, right? Now these sensations will ascend up to the thalamus through the second order neurons. Okay. So now you think of spinal cord. I've already told you about the ascending tracts. There were a spinothalamic tract. Remember, a spinothalamic was carrying pain and temperature in the lateral spinothalamic as well as proprioceptive sensations in the anterior spinothalamic if you remember very well and the lateral spinothalamic was decussating at the same very immediately at the same spinal segment while anterior spinothalamic was ascending a little one to two segments and then crossing to the opposite side and remember, because of proprioceptive sensations, this anterior spinothalamic tract was continuing in the midbrain along with the medial lamniscus. While this pain sensation, temperature and sensation carrying spinothalamic, little spinothalamic fiber, they were continuing in the spinal lamniscus. Okay. Then you think about the dorsal column. Dorsal column, what was happening? The spine, the the, uh, the neurons, they were uh, the, the central processes of these neurons, bringing it the, all those exteroceptive sensations, proprioceptive sensations from the entire body. You know, they have the nucleus in, uh, they have the, you know, cytons there in the DRG and the central processes passing via nucleus proprius. They will reach to the dorsal funiculus then new the fasciculus gristalis from the lower half fasciculus cunatus from the upper half they will reach down in the reach in the medulla into the respective nucleus then the second order fibers will decussate and will form the internal arcuate fibers and to, from the opposite side they will ascend up now they will ascend up to the thalamus through which bundle that is called medial lamniscus and which was already having this anterior spinothalamic tract so medial lamniscus remember it carries proprioceptive sensations from the trunk and the body and this will uh, you know medial lamniscus this will relay in the spinal cord in the ventral posterior lateral nucleus ventral posterior lateral nucleus of the thalamus and from there the third order neurons they will ascend up through the internal capsule and they will relay there in the you know you know sensory um, motor cortex area number that's post central gyrus area number three two and one that was about the spinal thing now it's because that was just a revision required here because we're talking about the facial sensations so this temperature and pain carrying sensations they will ascend up remember now here they will ascend up by the spinal lamniscus right and remember uh, the sensations brought in from this uh, sorry uh, the sensations from the superior sensory nucleus superior sensory nucleus which which was bringing in the proprioceptive sensations 
these fibers, the second order neurons from these nucleus, they will decussate, right? Remember the same thing which was happening in the dorsal column. They will decussate and reach to the opposite side of the pons at the same level and will ascend up further in the form of trigeminal lemniscus. So trigeminal lemniscus is very much similar to medial lemniscus. What was the difference that medial lemniscus was bringing uh, uh, made up of second order neurons from the carrying sensations from the, you know, proprioception from the body. While trigeminal lemniscus is bringing sense in the second order neurons, again, this also is decussating in the pons and reaching to the opposite side and there they will ascend as trigeminal lemniscus and will relay in the thalamus in the ventral posterior medial nucleus. Okay. Then the third order neurons from this thalamic nuclei will ascend up through the internal capsule and will relay in the primary sensory cortex that is postcentral gyrus area number three, two, three, one, and two. Okay. I remember there was a sensory homunculus. So there was a representation of face also, right? Big, big area for the lips, big area for the uh, thumb. So that was the sensory homunculus in the postcentral gyrus. So that means these fibers uh, from the you know medial lemniscus, then you know all these lemniscus rather spinal lemniscus, little lemniscus, all these they ascend up to reach the primary sensory cortex. Then about uh, the yes, even the mesencephalic nucleus. Spinal and this uh, spinal nucleus, chief sensory nucleus, mesencephalic nucleus, all these second order fibers will cross to the opposite side of the pons and will ascend as trigeminal lemniscus and will relay in the ventral posterior medial nucleus of the th uh, thalamus. So that is the trigeminal lemniscus. So that is how it is communicating to the upper motor neurons. Right. Uh, sorry, upper uh, uh, communicating with the upper centers, right? Uh, higher centers. That was about the ascending pathway. Now we will talk about the descending pathway that was related to the motor nucleus of the trigeminal. Motor nucleus, you know, to bring about the action through the eight different muscles derived from the first brachial arch. That means you will have to have sensations from the higher centers from the cerebral cortex. And those fibers will be called upper motor neurons for the trigeminal motor nucleus. And those fibers will, that means the, you know, corticonuclear fibers, they will relay here. Corticonuclear fibers from the uh, cerebral hemisphere will relay here. And then they will pass on through the lower motor neurons. And this nucleus, you know, it also has communication with extra pyramidal tract remember always you have to have two pathways is a major descending tract that is the corticonuclear pathway which will join here as well as from the extra pyramidal tract it will be rubropontine fibers right or rubronuclear fibers from the red nucleus it also have communication and it will also have communication with the mesencephalic Yes, I have already told you because uh, there are other nerves also bringing in sensations, right? So it will also have communication with the reflex, remember, for the reflex action. Because jaw jerk, if you see the jaw jerk tapping the lower jaw, the gnathion or the tip of the mandible and mm, at the chin. So that means it will have a horizontal communication also where you have to have this spinal reflex or this, uh, you know, reflex arch where you need not have communication in the higher centers. So it will have a communication with the mesencephalic nucleus as well. Okay. That was all about the communications of the trigeminal nucleus. Okay. What is this? Why is this pawn's bulge?
region one was the development region that it was because of pontine flexure and the other thing is they have these bulging these are, these are actually basilar part of pons and it has these cortico nuclear cortico spinal fibers passing down through this cut section as well as nuclei pontis also here we will talk about this in detail when we'll talk about pons okay then <laughs> Look here, the communication is simple. You are seeing this is uh, semilunar ganglion. This is the ophthalmic, this is the maxillary, and this is the mandibular division. And there you find is the motor division of mandibular nerve. So, and this is the trigeminal nerve. This you're seeing is the brain stem, right? And these are the two cerebral peduncles. This is actually the medial, I mean, anterior view we are finding is this is the midbrain, the two cerebral peduncles. These are the two thalamus, right? And this is the mesencephalic nucleus. This is the midbrain, mesencephalic nucleus. This is the uh, chief sensory nucleus of the trigeminal nerve that includes the motor nucleus as well on the medial side. And this much is the spinal nucleus of the trigeminal nerve, both the sides. Okay? Now look here, they have shown that actually this is the midline. So this is one side, the right side, and this is the opposite side, the left side. So this is from the right side, right? So sensations being brought in from the right side, they may be the dotted lines, this showing the discriminatory tactile sensations from the three divisions they've been brought in. So these, you can see that the discriminatory tactile sensation, the fine touch sensation, they descend down into the spinal nucleus of the trigeminal nerve, right? Then the general tactile sensation, one is discriminatory and the other is general tactile sensation. This you can see is through the three different nerves, they reach to the main chief sensory nucleus of the trigeminal nerve, right? Then superficial pain and temperature, superficial pain and temperature, as I told you, this dotted line, they are relaying down here in the spinal nucleus of the trigeminal nerve. So all these sensations you've seen that the general sensations will reach to the general tactile sensation will reach the superior nucleus. Pain, temperature and fine discriminatory touch will reach to the spinal nucleus. And what about the motor nucleus? This is an efferent pathway, right? So this will come from the motor nucleus, the lower motor neurons. They will pass out through this motor nucleus, a trigeminal nerve. Now see the higher communications. Now you look here that these nuclei, right? Mesencephalia, of course, will be having, you know, afferents from the different, so many nerves I told you, facial nerve, oculomotor nerve, hypoglossal nerve, all of the nucleus will be having a different, different communication. Song. What you're seeing is <clears throat> that all these fibers, the second order neurons, right? Even mesencephalic was receiving the unipolar neurons, but the second order neurons will be like, you know, again, the normal multipolar neurons. So they will, uh, you know, these will, the second order neurons, they will arise. They are crossing the brain stem or decussating the brain stem at the same, nearly at the same level. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> okay. So they are decussating and reaching the opposite side. Although you can see some sensations are having bilateral representation. They are having representation on the same side as well as they're reaching on the opposite side. So the sensations actually which reach on the opposite side, they together join to form the trigeminal lemniscus, right? These trigeminal lemniscus is also called as dorsal sensory ascending tract. And as I told you, they will ascend up and will relay in the, you know, ventral posterior medial nucleus of the thalamus. These are the thalamus. So these are second order neurons which decussate within the brainstem at the same segment and will ascend on the opposite side. Okay. This you can very well correlate with the dorsal column of the spinal cord. Okay. For forming an 
<coughs> you know, decussation within the brain stem, they reach to the opposite side, ascending through the trigeminal meniscus and they're relaying in the uh, ventral posterior medial nucleus of the thalamus. From the thalamus now, through this <coughs> temporoparietal radiation, thalamo, sorry, thalamoparietal radiation, through the internal capsule, they will reach to the uh, postcentral gyrus, to the postcentral gyrus, right? And they will relay there in the area three, one, and two, that is postcentral gyrus. Got it? Now we'll decide, uh, and you know, discuss about the descending pathway. This descending pathway arises, you know, higher upper motor neurons we're talking is upper motor neurons. They arise from the primary motor area. And the chief primary motor area is the precentral gyrus. Precentral gyrus is area number four. So from area number four, that is precentral gyrus, these will be the upper motor neurons, also called as corticobulbar tract, right? Anything which reaches down from the cortex to the brain stem is called corticobulbar tract. So, or, or particularly if reaching to any nucleus, you can also call that as corticonuclear fibers. But those fibers from the cortical region reaching to the spinal cord is called corticospinal tract. So, corticobulbar is somewhat same as corticonuclear fibers. So, this is the corticobulbar tract from the area number four precentral gyrus they will descend down and see now this also is crossing and rather having a bilateral representation same as you remember the pyramidal tract they also have 15 percent representation on the ipsilateral and 80 to 85 percent fibers reach to the opposite side similarly from here you're seeing that the upper motor neurons they are relaying in the same motor nucleus on the ipsilateral side as that's majority of the fibers upper motor neurons will reach the opposite side and from there this main central uh, motor nucleus these lower motor neurons will pass out via the motor root of the trigeminal and will convey along with the mandibular nerve to the eight muscles it has to supply they are all derived from the first sprinkle arch got it I hope it's understood. Yani ki the second order neurons hai, ya to upper motor neurons hai. They are decussated, right? Uh, you can say not, uh, complete decussation to 100% to hota nahi hai. 10 to 15% remain on the same side, but it to majority fibers, they decussate. It may be the sensory tract in the second order neurons or in the descending tract, it's the upper motor neurons will decussate. At the same spinal, uh, same segment of the mid uh, brainstem. Okay. So we are done with this. Now, the distribution of three branches of trigeminal nerve. Hand to hand. Abhi. Look here. Now, try, this is V1. Although this all the three divisions of thalamic nerve, maxillary nerve, mandibular nerve has been taught to you in detail. Just a fast revision, this V1 division, uh, when it arises from the trigeminal ganglion, it passes through the cavernous sinus, right? Passing through the cavernous sinus, then later portion of the cavernous sinus passing below the oculomotor and trochlear nerve. It runs along the little wall, then within the anterior portion of the little wall of the cavernous sinus, it divides into three divisions. That is, that is uh, frontal and lacrimal, which will pass through the superior little portion of the superior or vital fissure while nasociliary will pass through the middle portion of the superior uh, superior or vital fissure and ultimately will reach into the orbits and into the orbits this you're seeing is this frontal division which is the most dorsally like nerve in the orbit and it will divide into two <coughs> that is supraorbital supra uh, supra trochlear nerve supraorbital you can see it also supplies the skin over the forehead and deep below there is this what frontal sinus frontal sinus and the scalp up till the vertex and then you have supratrochlear nerve which will supply the lacrimal fossa here the lacrimal sac here the upper middle portion of the eyelid upper eyelid then the forehead uh, only thick up till the forehead it doesn't reach too much to the scalp then you have V2 division. It passes through the lateral wall of the governor's sinus, 
running below the ophthalmic division then it emer then it uh, passes out through foramen rotundum foramen rotundum say then it reaches the dirigo palatine ganglia uh, fossa where it gives out its different branches it gives its uh, zygomatic branch through zygomatic it is giving its uh, hold on we left this nasociliary yes nasociliary is another division of uh, ophthalmic nerve ophthalmic uh, nerve say nasociliary as the name suggests it will run towards the nasal side of the orbit and nasociliary will you know give this branch there is infratrochlear nerve it will supply the eyelids of both upper and lower eyelid on the medial side then it will also gives you know <clears throat> this uh, anterior ethmoidal middle ethmoidal uh, posterior ethmoidal and it will supply the uh, air sinuses ethmoidal air sinuses and it will also supply the posterior ethmoidal nerve will also supply the posterior uh, ethmoidal as well as the sphenoidal air sinus then if you remember the nerve supply of dura mater i told you this uh, v1 division through the anterior and posterior ethmoidal nerve Through the cribriform palate, it reaches the middle anterior portion of the you know uh, uh, cranial cavity. It supplies the dura of the floor of the anterior cranial fossa, and it does descends down into the nose also, and it supplies <coughs> the nasal septum, the little wall of the nose, and the, it emerges on the dorsum of the nose after passing through this. Uh, 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 nasal bone it emerges on the skin under the skin and supplies the skin of the root of the nose as well as reaching the tip of the nose and that is called the external nasal nerve until it remains within the nasal cavity it's called internal nasal which is in, uh, medial and lateral internal nasal supplying the medial septum and the little wall and ultimately it reaches the tip of the nose if it supply if it as which nerve supplies the tip of the nose it's external nasal nerve which is a branch of v2 division or uh which is sorry which is the branch of v1 ophthalmic division hota hai it is all developing from fronto nasal process right then it has a lacrimal division also lacrimal division you know <clears throat> lacrimal division will supply the little uh, eye uh, little portion of the eyelids will also supply the lacrimal gland and uh, uh it will have a communication through v2 and that is that is the zygomatic temporal nerve and through the zygomatic temporal nerve the parasympathetic fibers will enter the lacrimal nerve and will supply the lacrimal gland then v2 you know this zygomatic nerve zygomatic temporal zygomatic facial nerve branches in this continues as infraorbital nerve which supply the skin of the lo uh, lower eyelids little of the nose upper cheeks maxillary sinus up, you know and this also gives you know two branches within the orbit from the infraorbital canal that is anterior ethmoidal canal anterior uh, anterior Uh, superior alveolar nerve, middle superior alveolar nerve to supply the incisors and the canines, while the molars and premolars they supplied by posterior uh, posterior superior alveolar nerve, which is branch of the maxillary nerve. There are other branches they have not shown is the greater and lesser palatine, which supplies the hard palate and the soft palate uh, muscles. There are also pharyngeal branches from V2 to supply the pharynx. now v3 division you seeing v3 division has the anterior division first of all the main trunk main trunk se branches ke nikalti hain auricular temporal nerve and auricular temporal nerve supplies the pinna here external auditory meatus tympanic membrane on the outer surface right and the, this area above the ear also and the mastoid and the parotid region then auricular temporal nerve ke baad there are other branches here uh these are the um, motor divisions we're not talking here it's actually motor branches bhi nikalti hain the two tensors right tensor valley palatine and tensor uh, levi palatine they are also arising from the main trunk and the nerve masseteric uh, and the sorry nerve to medial pterygoid then there is anterior division anterior division give you know muscular branches to the lateral pterygoid to the temporalis to the uh and to the medial uh, lateral pterygoid temporalis and masseter right and continues as buccal nerve this buccal nerve remember it emerges between the two head of lateral pterygoids and will supply the mucosa on the skin and and the skin of the cheeks then this is the posterior division posterior division gives this branch the lingual nerve lingual nerve you know it subtics uh, the sensations the from the anterior two third of the tongue the extraceptive sensations while this cordate tympani when it joins it carries this 
taste sensations from this lingual nerve then you have this inferior alveolar nerve inferior alveolar nerve before passing to the mandibular canal it gives its branch called nerve to mylohyoid which supplies the two muscles that is mylohyoid and anterior is the digastric while this nerve, mandibular nerve which runs within the mandibular canal it supplies the all the lower teeth and it also carries you know this lingual nerve forget it uh, forgot to tell you that lingual nerve will carry parasympathetic secretory nerve fibers also and that will be relaying here in the mandibular ganglion and they will supply the uh, the post uh ganglionic fibers will supply the submandibular and sublingual salivary glands and ultimately this inferior alveolar nerve will emerge out through the mental foramen to form a mental nerve which supplies the skin here on the cheeks and the lower lips okay this is all what i have told you they have different given it a different color coding the green color area is all you can see this much area the sensory supply from this area is brought in through the v1 division don't forget that is front uh, yeah here you have this uh, frontal ear sinus sphenoidal ear sinus ethmoidal ear sinus the all the sensations are being brought through this v1 division and all the sensations from the orbit also <clears throat> then v2 divisions bring sensations from this portion of the face including sensations from the nasal cavity from the maxillary ear sinus from the upper jaw upper teeth as well as the palate right then you have this lower division blue color coding this brings in sensations from the teeth the, from the lower jaw from the chin from the skin around the lower jaw and from the cheeks and remember this uh, uh, sensations apart from this this also brings sensations from the temporal region and the preauricular region and the parot uh, upper portion of the auricle thick okay? this is a dotted line so as to express the different areas and i have been told you i am telling you that this one is v1 area and this is v2 area upper lips is this columella of the nose little lower eyelid and all and this is v3 area temple then just <laughs> cheeks area lower jaw chin area what is left is the yellow area now this yellow area then includes the yellow bulb angle of mandible and the neck and the area behind the uh, pinna that is through the lesser occipital nerve so all this is by anterior division of the cervical nerves while this area the bluish green area that is all being innervated by the posterior division or posterior primary ramus of the spinal cervical nerves okay they are seeing the branches of v1 division v1 division of thalamic nerve this has you know the frontal nerve running most dorsally frontal nerve divides into supraorbital you can see here and this one is supratrochlear right to so, supraorbital to me bata chuke area supplied supratrochlear i also told you like i mean one important points if you remember like primal fossa kya hai to infratrochlear uh, supratrochlear then scalp if you talk about then it's supraorbital and remember it's a very long branch reaching up to the vertex supraorbital passing out the supraorbital notch on the supraorbital margin then you have this division the nasociliary can you see this nasociliary it passes it crosses the optic nerve from above then it is, it is conveyed along with an artery remember ophthalmic artery runs along with uh, nasociliary nerve and superior ophthalmic vein the form, formula of van ठीक है वेन आर्टरी एंड नर्व यानी कि दैट सेम फॉर्मूला विल अप्लाई हियर द स्ट्रक्चर्स क्रॉसिंग द ऑप्टिक नर्व फ्रॉम अबव लेटरल टू मीडियल दिस विल बी वीएन राइट तो सुपीरियर ऑफथैलमिक वेन देन यू हैव ऑफथैलमिक आर्टरी एंड देन यू हैव नेसोसिलियरी नर्व द थ्री स्ट्रक्चर्स विल क्रॉस द ऑप्टिक नर्व फ्रॉम अबव फ्रॉम लेटरल टू मीडियल दिस इज नेसोसिलियरी नर्व इट गिव्स लॉन्ग सिलियरी ब्रांचेस सप्लाइज यू नो uh that uh, uh, tenens fascia and all the uh, ten, uh, tendon sorry uh, tenens fascia kehte hain then you have supply to the you know from the uh sclera of the eyeball then uh, it reaches the choroid as well then you have this uh, nasociliary giving this postethmoidal anterethmoidal and these are reaching to supply the meninges as well as the ethmoidal ear sinuses as well as the nasal cavity and this will continue as remember external nasal nerve to reach and supply the tip of the nose 
while it continues as infratrochlear nerve to supply the eyelids on the medial side, both upper and lower eyelids. This you're seeing is the lacrimal portion. It runs along the lateral wall of the uh, orbit and it supplies the lacrimal gland as well as the lateral portion of the eyelids. And it reaches the communi communi com communication from the zygomaticotemporal nerve for the secretin fibers. There you find is this middle crina, uh, this bone, this phenoid bone. And you're seeing it, uh, the posterior surface of the sphenoid you are seeing, or you can say you are seeing actually is the middle cranial fossa, the anterior surface of the middle cranial fossa or the posterior surface of the sphenoid. So you are seeing the body of sphenoid, the cella tarsica, this area here, you can see foramen lacerum has been bridged by this cartilage in a live subject, it is bridged by cartilage and this is the internal carotid. <laughs> this is the intracavernous course of the carotid artery forming a carotid siphon. They you find this is foramen rotundum, right? In the uh, greater wing, the sphenoid here, foramen rotundum, this is foramen oval, this is foramen spinosum. <clears throat> so foramen rotundum you find is the maxillary nerve emerging out. So maxillary nerve, when it emerges out, it reaches here in this region behind the maxilla. This is called, uh, you know, pterygo maxillary fissure. He can. And there are different openings here, pterygoid canal from the foramen lacerum, it communicates to this and there you have this uh, palatovaginal canal that is foramen rotundum through which maxillary now emerges and this is phenopalatine foramen, remember it is the uh, last uh, communication to the, little, uh, to the nasal cavity and the last branch of maxillary artery that is phenopalatine artery that uh, also enters to this foramen and even the nerve also to this foramen reaches to the little of the nose. Then you have this palatine, palatine canal which you have through this lesser and greater palatine foramen on the uh, <clears throat> uh, on the pyramidal process of the palatine bone you find these foramen and from there the greater and lesser palatine nerves will supply the hard palate as well as the soft palate. And this you're seeing is the infrabital canal fissure then you have infrabital canal where this Zygomatic nerve initially, then in probital nerve, it emerges out through this probital foramen. This is how they have shown is this maxillary, and remember that is this maxillary nerve which is through which it suspends this ganglion. This is pterygopalatine ganglion, and these are the different branches. Remember, if it's asked which uh, jaw, I mean upper jaw, I mean the, the branches being given out from here, this is the anterior superior, this middle superior alveolar. They are given out from the uh, infra orbital canal, but this nerve, posterior superior alveolar, is given out from within the pterygopalatine fossa. <clears throat> and these are the lesser palatine nerves supplying the soft palate, greater palatine descends down to supply the hard palate. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> this is actually they try to show you communication from the you know V1 and V2 division, and that communication is to zygomatic key. There's a branch called zygomatic temporal nerve, which communicates V1 and V2. <clears throat> Then there are two nerves, greater petrosal nerve, deep petrosal nerve, they do at the joint to form this nerve, the pterygoid canal, and this also relates in the pterygoid ganglion. This, you all know that these are the parasympathetic secretory fibers for the lacrimation as of the mucus secretion in this region of V2. There you find is mandibular V3 division. V3 division emerges from the, you know, foramen oval. There's a main trunk, main trunk supplies, you know, the two, three muscles, the two well, tensors, as well as the medial, ter medial pterygoid. Then the mm, muscular branches given out is the deep, uh, deep temporal nerve, masseteric nerve, nerve to little pterygoid. And then it divides an anterior and posterior division. Anterior division gives out this buccal branch, right? And then <clears throat> buccal nerve, which emerges between two heads of little pterygoid and supply the skin of the cheeks, <coughs> mucose of the cheeks and all. And finally, you find is the lower division. Lower division gives this lingual nerve as well. Leaving lingual nerve will have a communication with the chorid impani. You know that will supply the you know sensations sensations from the anterior to the, to the tongue. And there's a posterior division. Posterior division. This you know is phenomandibular ligament which splits to enclose this. And there's the lingula attached to which this ligament is attached. And there's a cavity foramen, the mandibular foramen through which. This man, you know, inferior alveolar nerve enters this mandible, but before entering, it gives its branch the nerve to myelohyde, which runs on the on, on, uh, inner surface of the body of mandible to innervate the two muscles. There is anti-bleep diagnostic as well as myelohyde. 
while this uh, nerve supplies the lower dentition and continuous mental nerve to supply the skin here by the way who will tell me in this diagram there's something relevant which i taught you about the lingual nerve and if you know can tell me that lingual nerve has more common uh, chances of get be, being uh, getting injured uh, by a dentist and that you remember that this lingual nerve is in very much close approximation to the medial side of the third molar it winds just below the below the third molar tooth so in cases of extraction of third molar tooth the dentist or the dental surgeon has to be take care enough that this lingual nerve should not be <clears throat> damaged so that's the course of lingual nerve can you see here and this is the inferior uh, inferior alveolar now okay now the brain stem lesions brain stem lesions of this uh, nerve fifth nerve brain stem lesion as i was talking about you know now we just focus on the hand say that we are talking about spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve and the superior sensory superior sensory lies where in the upper part of the pons while spinal nucleus lies in the lower pons medulla spinal cord now as you talk about any injuries related to the ascending injuries within the brain stem what will happen initially it will be if it is an ascending lesion of the brain stem so it will first of course damage the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve and the spinal nucleus carries space and brain temperature fine touch while the superior sensory nucleus of trigeminal uh, you know receives the um, uh, general sensations right so what happens is when there is compression of this nucleus is elongated nucleus right so at a time there might be some uh, some neuron some sensations sensations being compromised right so because of any compressive lesion so that happens that brings about this dissociative sensory loss dissociated sensory loss is wajah se hota hai because the two nuclei have been separately you know separate apart so compression of one nucleus will cause separation or you know sensory loss of pain and temperature if it's spinal nucleus damage right and superior sensory nucleus if it's damaged so it will be the you no know, general sensations will be lost so look here now how is it distributed now that distribution in cause onion skin distribution onion skin distribution means they said that the periphery in the periphery it's this uh, you know v3 then in the head this area this cheeks area lower eyelid wala area or some no know that is by v2 and this is the uh, muzzle area this actually is called muzzle area where your nostrils and your oral cavity opens is called the muzzle area this actually they have tried to explain that this develops from the frontal nasal process right that means it's innervated by v1 area thick ophthalmic area v2 is this area and v3 is this area okay so if an ascending lesion happens ascending lesion happens and now you think about the diagram i had drawn about that spinal nucleus of trigeminal it was having pars oralis in the upper portion thus pars interpolaris in the middle portion and then pars caudalis in the lower portion so if it's an ascending lesion of the brain stem you can imagine the lower portion of the spinal nucleus will be damaged first then the middle portion and lastly the upper portion so what will happen is like an onion if you peel if you if you prick uh, onion the initially the outer uh, layers of the outer uh, surface will be damaged then the next layer then the, the deepest portion will be you know will be the last to be damaged right so similarly what's happen here if you remember that two or three portions of the spinal nucleus pars oralis is the uppermost portion which was representing this muzzle area oral area that's why it's called pars oralis so in that in 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 such ascending lesions you will find initially there will loss of sensations in the you know around the pinna and the lower jaw and this area but later on gradually there will sensory loss here so this area is initially spared and till last this muzzle area is is spared till last got it that is about onion skin distribution of pin prick and temperature loss for these two sensations you can check uh, that pin prick and temperature loss is the last it persists here till the last like 
remember so it will be the last to be damaged this sensation will be the last loss in this region in the muscle area and that's why you call it as onion skin distribution and it differs from the dermatomes of the skin how does it differ from the dermatomes can anybody tell me in dermatomes of the skin if you remember i told you there was overlapping of successive dermatomes let's say t4 t5 t6 so t4 will overlap t5 from above and t6 will overlap t5 dermatome from below so there was successing overlapping <coughs> of the dermatomes right so here it is different it actually in the face region this is actually the dermatomes rather right yeah actually had dermatomes here it is a territory innervated by the trigeminal nerve but <coughs> the area you have seen is you know distributed like this because there are several concepts i told you three different concepts barachi come as spinal nucleus so it is different it is different that uh, from the dermatomes of the spinal now uh and hardly much overlapping is there because usme to there was overlapping in the spinal nerves theek okay? and low pontine medullary and cervical lesions mein this is going to happen the pattern of sensory loss will be from peripheral to peripheral region then last will be the muscle area to undergo this uh, sensory loss and this is called onion skin distribution this type of pattern you will find in pin prick and temperature loss okay now testing of the three divisions first of all how will you check if a person's V1 of thalamic division is intact or not? The to check is like you know uh, this uh, lacrimal uh, lacrimal division of the uh, of thalamic nerve, as well as this so on the medial side is infratrochlear nerve. Uh, they innervate the conjunctiva as well, right? So anything which when it irritates the conjunctiva or this cornea, <coughs> they will of course the blinking reflex, right? this blink uh, there will be a blinking reflex and very initially i have told you about this blinking reflex is one of the visual protective phenomenon visual protective reflex i told you when i was teaching you oculomotor nerve because lps is innervated by this and um, you know visual protective reflex jo hai ye corneal blink jo iske hoti hai iski wajah se you can check by you know a cotton bud with a you know pointed end you can touch upon the cornea you will find that there is blinking so this is called testing of uh, of thalamic division and if this will injured of course there will be loss of this blinking uh, reflex and uh, that might lead to a dry eye testing of v2 division how will you test for v2 division v2 division ke liye maine bataya tha if you imagine the area supplied by v2 division is the nasal area uh, then upper jaw upper teeth and then the mucosal glands in the pharynx palate nasal cavity oral cavity right and i told you that all it is being innervated by the parasympathetic outflow from the anterior palate and ganglion to kahin kahin iski wajah se kya hota hai hair ganglion of hay fever remember स्नीज कब होता है व्हेन समथिंग एलर्जिक व्हेन समथिंग पॉल इन ग्रेन्स ऑफ समथिंग व्हिच यू आर एलर्जिक दैट इंटर्स योर इफ समथिंग इरिटेंट व्हिच इरिटेट्स यू मीजल म्यूकोजा राइट दैट दैट ब्रिंग्स इट अबाउट दिस रिफ्लेक्स ऑफ कफ राइट स्नीज रहता है स्नीजिंग कफ लग जाता है सो इसमें जो होता है जो रिफ्लेक्स बनेगा वो किसकी वजह से बनेगा एक्चुअली एफरेंट्स विल बी ब्रॉट इन If sneeze में क्या होगा इस जो इरिटेबिलिटी हुई नेजल म्यूकोजा में दफरेंस विल बी ब्रॉड इन थ्रू मैगजलरी नाउ यू नो वी टू नाउ वॉट विल बी दिफरेंट रिस्पॉन्स इफरेंट रिस्पॉन्स किसकी वजह से होगा इफरेंट रिस्पॉन्स होगा इसमें क्या होता है इफरेंट रिस्पॉन्स में स्नीज एक्चुअली यू नाइन्थ एंड टेंथ नर्व द मसल्स डिराइव फ्रॉम द नाइन्थ एंड टेंथ एंड इलेवेंथ नर्व दीज आर द फेरेंजियल मस्कुलेचर द पैलेट राइट and the larynx is the wind pipe so <clears throat> ye jo hai pharyngeal arches mein ho gaye third fourth and uh, sixth arches right so that means nucleus kaun sa irritated ho raha hai nucleus ambiguous right to efferents of sneeze reflex will emerge through nucleus ambiguous which innervates the muscle derived from third fourth and sixth arches one thing 
then it will also innervate the respiratory centers in the medulla theek hai kyunki sneeze ke liye you have to have this blow of air simultaneously right to yani ki medulla medulla mein kya ho raha hai the respiratory centers also will bring about this sneeze reflex then down below in the cervical region if you remember there was this diaphragm being in a very phrenic nucleus yes so the phrenic nerve nucleus lies in the anterior horn the central portion of the anterior horn of the spine, uh, cervical segments phrenic nerve nucleus will bring, bring about the contraction of the diaphragm as well as the upper thoracic segments don't forget that when you sneeze that's like you know in sneezing actually you are compressing your thoracic cage so extra ocular extra thoracic or uh, you can say ki intercostal muscles are actually also coming into this role so if intercostal muscles uh help you in sneezing like you know uh, increasing the intra thoracic pressure right so for that you have to have the involvement of the spinal nerves from the thoracic region as well theek okay? hai so itne sare right from medulla remember nucleus ambiguus then respiratory centers medulla mein then you have phrenic nerve nucleus then you have the intra you know spinal nerves of the cervical uh, thoracic segments upper thoracic segments so itne sare nucleus milke ye sneeze reflex cause karate hain but it to ये स्नीज रिफ्लेक्स होता है नॉर्मल अगर ये हो रहा है यानी कि यू इरिटेटिंग समथिंग यानी कि हम कोई इरिटेंट जो है नाक में डालते हैं नाक में स्प्रे करते हैं एंड देर स्नीज राइट टू यू चेक फॉर दिस मैगजरी डिविजन एंड इफ ऑफ कोर्स इफ इट्स इंजर्ड दिस विल नॉट कॉन हैपन राइट तो यू कैन चेक फॉर दिस and before that uh, v1 ka i told you how was how was checking for the v1 division that was by corneal reflex blink reflex remember usme afferent was afferent was v2 division maxillary oh, sorry v1 v1 ke through there was afferent irritability of the conjunctiva and cornea ki wajah se there was afferent being passed through v1 division and efferent ke se pass ho raha tha facial nerve se because orbicularis oculi are going to blink right theek hai so efferent will be brought about of the blink reflex the efferent will be brought about through facial now for the contraction of constrictor of uh, constrictor of the palpebral fissure that is orbicularis oculi yahan pe bhi bata diya and now we'll talk about this testing of v3 now v3 is mandibular now mandibular nerve ko test kaise karte hain you know tip of the jaw ko hum hold karte hain and down lo slightly look as the person don't clinch clinch rather don't clinch the teeth just cool like you know approximate the teeth and then you place of your index finger at the chin and you tap over the index finger there will be a jerk at the temporomandibular joint and this is called the elicitation of the jaw reflex right and this you are seeing is actually v3 ko kya we are actually checking the motor component right we checking the motor component of mandibular nerve because it's in this this tmj is involved and tmj is being controlled by the muscles of mastication right so and that's the proprioceptive sensations which you are sending right through this reflex by tapping the muscles right so this will reach to the mesencephalic the afferents will reach to the mesencephalic nucleus and now think about i told you that the the motor nucleus of trigeminal is not separate nucleus it's very closely placed there and it will have a communication direct communication with the mesencephalic because it's a reflex no higher centers have to play a role in this right from the mesencephalic the efferents will pass from the motor nucleus of trigeminal to innervate these muscles of mastication and they will bring about this action so it is a completely trigeminal nerve involvement v थ्री इन्वॉल्वमेंट वी थ्री से एफरेंट भी जा रहा है और वी थ्री से ही इफरेंट भी आ रहा है गॉट इट तो इफ दिस दिस इज टू चेक द पिटेंसी ऑफ दिस नर्व इंटीग्रिटी ऑफ वी थ्री डिविजन न इन इफ इमेजिन वॉट हैपनिंग इफ देर इज इंजरी टू मोटर डिविजन ऑफ ट्राइजिमाइनल नर्व मोटर डिविजन अगर दैट्स अगेन अ लोअर मोटर नर्व पैलसी 
like jo motor nerve nucleus of trigeminals the neurons they're descending they're going ipsilateral right so that simply on the same side there will be uh, damage to the muscle and that will be uh, flaccid paralysis lower motor neuron paralysis so what will happen flaccid paralysis may if you place your hand on the uh, as the subject to chew give him a chewing gum and ask him to chew so yeah what you'll find you place your hand on the temporal region and you'll find that the muscles there on that side of the affected side the temporalis will not be you you will not feel the contractions you will not feel if you place your hand on the side of the cheeks at the angle of the mandible you will not feel the contraction of masseter so these are the signs we check check for the uh, patency of these you know uh, muscles and further and if it's a late uh, late illness they will find there will be wasting or atrophy of the muscles also and the decrease in strength of biting although you might have some accessory muscles through which you might try but the strength of biting normally is like they lohe ke chane chaba sakte hain hum log apne impression se we can uh, we can you know ek aluminium rod pe we can uh, leave the impressions of the of teeth uh, because this masseter is a very powerful muscle right so in this case this the, the strength of biting will be decreased and don't forget that the two tensors right supplied from the motor division that was tensor tympani tensor velli palatini you know, here we talking is about tensor palate uh, tensor velli uh, tensor tympani right so tensor tympani remember it was attached to malleus right and malleus was attached to the tympanic membrane right so this uh, this muscle actually mm, you know uh, helps to uh, receive uh, the high pitched sounds right so and because if this tensor tympani is damaged the vibrations of this uh, tympanic membrane will be decreased and so you will not be able to hear the low pitch sounds so that's called hypoacusis hypoacusis is partial deafness of the low pitched sounds theek jo low pitch sounds hain because actually kar kya rahi thi tensor tympani was you know ye jo tympanic membrane se attach hoti hai malleus and malleus se attach hoti hai ye tensor tympani so this uh, through this muscle uh, there is like you know increased vibration which helps you uh, amplify the sound reaching to the internal ear but because of this damage so low pitch sounds hame sunai nahi padegi and that is called hypoacusis at the same point wait a minute there is important point that there is another muscle there are two muscles in the middle ear cap and the other muscle develops on the second brachial arch this one develops on the first brachial arch tensor tympani and the second one is stapedius and it stapedius develops from the second brachial arch and second brachial arch se jo sir screen not visible screen turn green abhi tak screen green hi aa rahi hai abhi tak screen green aa rahi hai ये तुम्हारा क्या है ये स्क्रीन क्यों ग्रीन हो जाती है अब अभी भी नहीं ओहो मोटर डिवीजन ऑफ ट्राइजी माइन यप तो अभी इट्स विजिबल ना हाइपो इस पे क्या होता है स्टेप्स में क्या होता है स्टेप्स वाज एक्चुअली डूइंग द अपोजिट वर्क स्टेप्स वाज एक्चुअली यू नो डिक्रीजिंग द वाइब्रेशंस डिक्रीजिंग द हाई पिच साउंड रीचिंग टू द इंटरनल ईयर सो इन केस ऑफ डैमेज टू द स्टिपीडियस दे विल बी हाइपर एक्यूसिस राइट in case of damage to stapedius will lead damage uh, paralysis of stapedius will lead to hyperacusis paralysis of tensor tympani will lead to hypoacusis okay trigeminal ab dekho wo bhi chala gaya upar ka kahan gaya wo trigeminal there's nobody to help here trigeminal neuralgia trigeminal neuralgia is you know you know it's mild to severe pain in the uh, involved with the face that 
uh, which and according to the distribution of the three divisions you can characterize that which of the division is you know involved due to irritation or due to some injury or due to some infection or some trauma these these uh, might be involved and basically it might also be to uh, degenerative injuries like multiple sclerosis and with the myelin degeneration happens and remember this happens more commonly in females above 50 years of age and v2 is more frequently involved the, the division involved trigeminal is v2 and here the treatment is actually uh, sedation you you know i try to calm down that particular nerve and uh, by giving sedatives like you know carbamazepine that is the drug for you know lowering the impulses or you know, hampering the pain impulses from reaching the high centers free syndrome free syndrome that has been told to you i believe in the parotid region also this skin covering the angle of the mandible in the parotid is innervated by greater great uh, great uh, auricular nerve great auricular nerve is branched from cervical now cervical plexus and auricular temporal nerve is a secretive motor nerve supplied to the parotid gland so what happens is after surgery not not be a proper surgery what happens that these two nerves in the course of regeneration of nerve fibers the two nerve fibers the two nerves might fuse and because of the fusion what happens is because uh, uh, the purpose of this uh, auricular temporal uh, is to provide secretive nerve fibers so what happens is like a person with this free syndrome when he starts eating and chewing there will be you know sweating and redness in this area of masseter or in the area of angle of mandible that's called free syndrome okay so we are done